Good day, students. My name is Lassisi Ajadi, your physics teacher for today. Our topic for today is application of lenses in the woman eye and the camera. Learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to analyze the concept of optical instruments with emphasis on one, the construction of a model of a camera. Two, the functions of parts of a camera. Three, the principle of image formation by a camera. Four, the parts of the woman eye and their functions. Five, some terms associated with the eye. Six, the defects of the eye and how each can be corrected. Seven, the compare and contrast the eye and the camera. Content. Let's start with a simple lens camera. The simple lens camera consists of a light proof box whose inside is painted black with a converging lens in front and a light sensitive for film at the back. The lens focuses the image of the object on the film. There is a provision to adjust the distance between the lens and the film. The diaphragm controls the amount of light that enters the camera through the aperture and the shutter of a variable speed between the lens and the film allows light to pass for a determined period, exposing the film to light in order to capture a permanent image of an object. Formation of images by a camera. To take a photograph or form an image, light from a distant object is refracted through the converging lens. The diaphragm adjusts the amount of light allowed through the aperture into the camera and an adjustable shutter isolates the inside of the camera from light until the picture is taken. Then the shutter opens for a predetermined length of time, allowing the image or picture to form on the film, which is then said to be exposed for developing and printing. I want you all to know that digital camera do not use film. Instead, the image is formed onto an image sensor that turns the light into electric signals. <clears throat> now, the human eye. The eye serves an as an optical instrument. It has a refracting system containing a converging lens which forms an inverted real image of an object on a light sensitive layer at the back of the eye called the retina. The image is transmitted to the brain by the optical nerve where it is interpreted as upright. The essential parts of the eye and their functions. Number one, the cornea is a transparent bulge in the front part of the eye. It serves as a protective covering in front of the lens and allows light into the eye. Number two, the aqueous humor is a transparent liquid between the cornea and the lens. Number three, the vitreous humor is a jelly-like liquid between the lens and the rest of the eyeball. It helps to maintain the shape of the eye and the prayer inside the eyeball. Number four, the iris behind the cornea is the part which gives the color of the eye. It controls the amount of light passing to the eye by expanding or contracting. Number five, the iris has a tiny opening at its center called the pupil, which regulates the quantity of light 
entering the eye. The pupil looks black because the inner layer of the eye, the choroid, is black. Let's go for a short break. Welcome back. We are still on essential parts of the eye and their functions. Number six, the crystalline or converging lens. This is between the aqueous and vitreous humors. It changes the shape of the eye from time to time and also focuses light from the object onto the retina at different distances from the eye. Number seven, the ciliary muscle. This supports the lens and attach it to the wall of the eye. These muscles, by their contraction and expansion, halter the focal length of the lens and changing it by changing its shape. Number eight, the retina is a light sensitive area of cells at the back of the eye on which image is formed. It is connected to the brain by the optic nerve which conveys the sensation of sight to the brain. Number nine, the yellow spot. This is the most sensitive spot of the retina where light entering the eye are brought to a focus. And here, the clearest image is formed. Number 10, the black spot is the point of exit of the nerve from the retina is the point of exit of the optic nerve from the retina. It is insensitive to light. Number 11, the sclerotic layer is the outer covering of the eye. Now let's take some terms associated with the eye. Number one, accommodation. Is the ability of the eye to alter or adjust the focal length of its lens to form clear images of objects at different distances on the retina. This adjustment is brought about by the action of the ciliary muscles. Number two, binocular fission is the overlapping of the two images formed by both eyes, which gives an impression of depth and solidity and makes it possible to see things in relief. Number three, persistence of fission. This is the ability of the eye to retain light or image on the retina for a few seconds, even after the light is removed. Number four, near and far points. The nearest point at which an object can be clearly seen is called the near point. It is about 25 centimeter for a normal high while the farthest point at which an object can be clearly seen is called the far point. It is at infinity for a normal eye. Let's look at the defects of fission. There are two common defects of fission, which are the long side and the short side. Both defects arise when the eye lens is unable to accommodate effectively the long sight, which is also known as hypermetropia and its correction. A long sighted person can see far objects but cannot see near objects clearly. An object at a normal near point N can be clearly seen by the eye because the rays from the object are brought to a focus behind the retina. This is caused by the eyeball being too short or the focal length of the eye lens being too long. We'll be back after a short break. 
Welcome back. During the last lesson, we have described the long-sightedness defect of vision. We now want to look at how that can be corrected. Correction of long sight. Long sight can be corrected with a converging lens placed in front of the eye. The converging lens converges the rays from the object before they are further converged by the eye lens and brought to a focus on the retina. The second defect, short sight, also known as myopia and its correction. A short-sighted person can see near or close objects, but cannot see far or distant objects because parallel rays from a distant object are brought to a focus in front of the retina instead of at the retina. This may be due to the eyeball being too long or the focal length of the eye lens being too short. Correction of short sight. This can be corrected by placing a diverging lens in front of the eye. The diverging lens first diverges the rays from the object before they are converged by the eye lens and brought to a focus on the retina. Let's take an activity. Find the focal length of the lens required to correct the defect of vision of a man whose near point is 50 centimeter. Assume the least distance of vision of the normal eye to be 25 centimeter. How do we solve this? For the man to see objects clearly at 25 centimeter from the eye, the image must appear to be at 50 centimeter. That is, U is equal to 25 centimeter. V is equal to minus 50 centimeter. You see the lens formula, 1 over F is equal to 1 over U plus 1 over V, which will give you 1 over 25 plus 1 over minus 50. And when we solve that, F is equal to 50 centimeter. This shows that the man will require a convex lens. Now, similarities and differences between the camera and the human eye. Let's take similarities first. Camera has a light tight box painted black inside, while human eye has a black pigment inside, the choroid. Two, camera has opening for light to enter through the aperture, while human eye has opening for light to enter through the pupil. Three, camera has converging lens. Human high, human high has converging lens. Four, diaphragm controls the amount of light entering the camera, while iris controls the amount of light entering the eye. Five, camera has sensitive material, the film, while human eye also has a sensitive material, the retina. Now the differences. Camera, the lens of a camera, camera has a fixed focal length, while human has, human eye has a variable focal length, that is the ciliary muzzle. Two, the distance between the lens and film of a camera can be varied, while the distance between the lens and the retina of human eye is fixed. Three, camera is not subjected to defects while human eye is subjected to defects of fission. Four, camera is a mechanical device, while human eye is a biological organ. Take the following as your assignment. Number one, the image of a distant object is focused before the retina. What defect is this? And with what type of lens can it be corrected? Two, mention two similarities and two differences between a camera and the human eye. Three, what part of camera corresponds to the iris of the human eye? So next class, we'll continue from where we stop. I want to thank you all for being attentive.